XYZ Limited purchased 80% shares of ABC Limited on 1st January 2016 for Rs. 1,40,000. So we are buying 80% shares on 1st January 2016. So 1st January 2016, that is becoming our acquisition date. The issued capital of ABC Limited on 1st January 2016 was 1 lakh and the balance in the p and was 60,000. So these are nothing but the pre-acquisition figures. During the year ended 31st December 2016, ABC Limited earned a profit of 20,000 and at the year end declared and paid a dividend of Rs 15,000. So you purchase the shares on 1st January 2016. After that, the company has earned, I mean the subsidiary has earned 20,000 rupees of profit and out of that 20,000, the subsidiary is declaring a dividend of 15,000. 15,000 is 80 percent, that is 12,000. 12,000 rupees of dividend shall be received by the parent company. So that's the question. Show by an entry how the dividend should be recorded in the books of XYZ Limited. You are receiving dividend out of profits that have been earned after the acquisition of shares. So this is post acquisition dividend. Post acquisition dividend shall be credited to the profit and loss account. So whatever 12,000 rupees that you are receiving, we will let it go to the PN. This treatment that we are giving for a dividend is as per accounting standard 13. It has nothing to do with accounting standard 21. Accounting standard 13 argues that if you are receiving dividend for the period before the acquisition of shares, then we should treat it as pre-acquisition dividend. Pre-acquisition dividend cannot be credited to the P&L. Pre-acquisition dividend is a recovery of cost. It should rather be credited to the investment account. But here, you are earning profit for the year ended 31st December 2016. You purchase the shares on 1st January 2016. So this dividend is earned out of the profits that the subsidiary has earned after it became our subsidiary. So the parent company has every right to participate in this dividend. And that is the reason, treat it as post acquisition. Let it go to the profit and loss account. So that's the question they are saying, show by an entry how the dividend should be recorded. We say, Accounting entry for a dividend for a dividend received by XYZ Limited. The accounting entry shall be bank account debit. Total dividend is twenty thousand. Uh, sorry, 15,000. Total dividend is 15,000. We will not receive entire 15,000. We have purchased 80% shares. So we will receive 12,000 dividend. And we'll set to profit and loss account. 12,000. So dividend is for the post acquisition period. Let it go to the p &L. So parent will credit this dividend received from the subsidiary to its own profit and loss account. The next question that they have is, what is the amount of minority interest on 1st January 2016 and 31st December 2016? To answer this, you will have to carry out pre and post acquisition analysis. Pre and post acquisition analysis. We say on 1st January 2016, after 1st January 2016. 
1st January 2016. Figures are there in the opening paragraph. Share capital on 1st January 2016 is 1 lakh. Profit and loss account. 1st January 2016, 60,000. And then they have given us that we have earned a profit of 20,000. So this 20,000 has been earned after 1st January 2016. Now out of that profit, 15,000 of dividend has been paid. So we say dividend paid for 2016. 15,000. So we get 1 lakh 60,000 and 5,000. We would like to work out the minority interest now. Determination of minority interest. First, we want it on 1st January 2016. Right, the net assets are 160. We have purchased 80% shares, so 20% of it. 32,000. After 1st January 2016, 5,000 into 20%. So 5,000 into 20% is 1,000. So 1st January 2016, the minority interest is 32,000 and on 31st December 2016, it is 33,000. That's what the question was. And now we require the goodwill or the capital reserve, right? We purchase these shares for 1,40,000. 1,40,000. So finally, Determination of goodwill oblique capital reserve This working is also known as cost of control working We say cost of investment one lakh forty thousand. Compare this with the share in net assets. Share in net assets on first January twenty sixteen. It's one lakh sixty into eighty percent. One lakh twenty eight thousand. Work out the difference. Twelve thousand. You have paid more. 
So it is goodwill.